بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, all praise and all gratitude due to our Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider. May his peace and blessings be upon all of his messengers. In particular, the seal of the messengers, Muhammad and his pure family and righteous companions and may the peace of the Lord be with you and upon you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in this series of investigation about the hadith and the sayings the tradition the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the previous parts we went through some of them investigating the chain of narrators, investigating the content itself, the content. And then we found that these allegations are baseless. It had been attributed to the Prophet due to some political interests. There are some uh, interest groups, lobbies who existed at that time and they wanted to promote one idea or one person against the others. Today in this part, this is the first part and we're going to have a second part inshallah. Again we're going to investigate another popular hadith. Though it has not been narrated by the two top leaders of hadith al-imam al-bukhari and al-imam muslim in their sahihs in their books in their work but it has been mentioned by imam ahmed ibn hanbal in his musnad by uh, abu dawood al-sajistani by ibn majah al-qazwini and by uh, al-imam al-nasai and this hadith states that the Prophet said to his companions, and he was giving a speech. This is not a private conversation. Allegedly, he was giving a speech. So the one who fabricated this hadith, he was a smart. He wanted to give more credibility to this hadith. So he, did, he said the Prophet after the morning, the Fajr prayers in his mosque, he said, after me, there will be some turmoils. Some turmoils. So you have to follow my Al-Khulafa Al-Rashidin, my righteous successors. You know, bite hard on their path on their tradition, on their obedience, obey them. Let's read, you know, this hadith and let's go to a tirmidhi in his Sunan, Sunan al tirmidhi uh, He says, on the authority of Al-Arbaad ibn Sariya, the man who narrated this hadith, his name is Al-Arbaz, Ibn Sariya. Let's chase this man. And I would tell you, when you chase him and investigate him, and investigate his life, what you will find. I will tell you shortly. But let me recite the wording of the hadith for those who are interested in hearing the hadith in Arabic. In Asari uh, in in uh, al tirmidhi this is the wording of the hadith. قال أوصيكم بتقوى الله والسمع والطاعة وإن عبد حبشي 
even if you listen to someone who is a black, not necessarily to be from Quraysh. You know. So he puts these elements, you know, that the Prophet would may say them, you know, they are not strange to the Prophet, to attract you more to the hadith. To give more credibility to say that this hadith is authentic so he has to bring things that are realistic in islam so the prophet says even if that leader is abdun habashi habasha abyssinia referred to africa at that time and they used to to bring slaves from abyssinia to serve the arab people in the arabian peninsula so even if that person is slave from Africa, listen to him. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ يَرَى اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا When you live, when you outlive me after I died, you're going to see uh, a lot of disputes and conflicts and turmoils. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتُ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّهَا ضَلَالَةً Do not follow the innovations because they are misguidance. فَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ ذَلِكْ مِنْكُمْ The day when you say, when you see there is a plenty of innovations and misguidance. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Follow my tradition. وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِئِينَ And follow the tradition of my successors who are righteous. Which is meant here, it is meant literally, in, in another word, it's, it's, it's the four successors after the Prophet, the four caliphs. Now, Imam al tirmidhi says, هذا حديث حسن صحيح. We accept this, and this is a hadith which is good and acceptable. We come to Abu Dawood al-Sajistani in his Sunan, and then, now, al tirmidhi he says, the prayers was, was, Salatul Ghadat, the, 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 the noon prayers. And then here, it does not say which prayers it was. The same guy, the same man who narrated the hadith, Al-Arbaath ibn, ibn Sariya. Remember this name. We're going to comment on this name soon. He says exactly the same. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَيَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءِ الْمَهْدِينَ الرَّاشِدِينَ And to the end. Then you come to Ibn Majah. You says, he says the same thing. Again, exactly the same narrator. Exactly the same man. Not someone else. Exactly the same man. But here he says, صَلَّى بِنَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ of course, they don't say wa alihi. I add wa alihi wa sallam. Salat al subh in Sunan Ibn Majah. And it could be Salat al Ghadat, also, it could be the morning prayers. Ahmed ibn Hanbal again, he says the same hadith, he narrates the same hadith. Al Hakim in his book Al Mustadrak, he says the same hadith. And many others, they mention this hadith. Now, First of all, the very first thing that you notice, you go after the narrator of the hadith on the authority of Al-Arbaad ibn Sariya. You investigate his life from Sunni sources. You find that this man was one of those who lived on the Sufa, the platform that the Prophet, peace be upon him, created for Muslims who were needy, poor, homeless, who could not afford a house, they would live inside the mosque of the Prophet on a platform called a sofa. He, the Prophet, he built that for them, to shelter them. And of course, the Muslims would come and give them food, help, money, clothing, and so on. Those were the poorest in, in the city of Medina. And this man is originally from Syria, from the city of Homs in Syria. And then we find that this man is the only narrator of the hadith 
which brings some suspicion. And these suspicions are legitimate. Why? Because the Prophet gave this speech after the morning prayers. When the mosque is packed with worshippers, with musallim. How come only one person heard the hadith and he narrated the hadith? Usually, hadith with such importance and caliber should be narrated by more than one. On certain occasions, such a hadith are narrated by 10, 15, let's say 8, let's say 5. How come only one person hears the Prophet and the Prophet is saying that in, the, in a public place, in his mosque, after the prayers, not while the, the mosque is empty, after the morning prayers, the mosque is packed. How come there, has, there is only one narrator to this hadith, not more than one? And then he says, وَكَانَتْ مَوْعِضَةً بَلِيغَةً ذَرَفَتْ مِنْهَا الْعُيُونَ وَوَجِلَتْ مِنْهَا الْقُلُوبِ when he gave a speech, it was emotional, it was heartbreaking, it was very touching. People started shaking, people were crying when he said this hadith. So how come only one person? This is a very important moment, you know. Where are the others? Where did they go? Only one person. And then when you trace this person, you find him that even after the death of the Prophet, he moved to Sham. He's from the people of Hims. He was one of the supporters of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. He lived in an environment which was completely and absolutely overwhelmed with hate and a prejudice against the family of the Prophet, in particular, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. That person lived in that atmosphere. So he produced this hadith during such, such hostile atmosphere against Ahlul Bayt. These are the circumstances where he fabricated the hadith. In Syria, during the reign of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, against Imam Ali alayhi salam. He said, the Prophet, God forbids, the Prophet would never say that, but he alleges that the Prophet said there will be a turmoil, like a civil war, fitna, discord, and then hold fast to the tradition of al khulafa al rashidin not Ahlul Bayt, khulafa al rashidin Okay? So, this person, you know, is one of the followers of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. And this is why maybe an Imam like al-Bukhari, he was not intimidated, he was not deceived by this hadith. Neither al-Imam Muslim. They refused to record this hadith in their books. So you don't find it there. You find it with Ibn Majah, as I said, with Abu Dawood, Sajistani, with At-Tirmidhi, with Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, but you don't find it with Imam Muslim and Imam al-Bukhari. And of course, there is some sort of conviction among the Sunni transmitters of hadith and huffad. Remember the term huffad, transmitters of hadith. That when Bukhari and Muslim, they overlook a hadith and they don't take care of it and they don't bring it and they don't include it in their books, this means that there is something wrong with it. Even if others, they record it. But it does not carry the same weight. Does not have that much influence. Does not have that much respect among the Huffad, the community of the Hadith. They don't care about that. And this is the opinion of people like Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah himself he comes to certain hadiths and he said, yes, yes. I mean, this person, that person, this imam, that hafid, they recorded it. They transmitted this hadith, but Bukhari and Muslim, they did not. So here we, 
we we pause because this is you know when they don't mention it there is a reason for that it could be a legitimate reason he's not saying it could be completely wrong the hadith but he says there is a reason so we don't take that hadith to the heart and this is one of them alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatul khulafa al rashidin min ba'di uddu alayha bin nawajid it has not been narrated by imam bukhari or imam muslim so this man the narrator of the hadith is problematic al arbad ibn sariya and the two shaykhs two shaykhs here means al bukhari and muslim they never quoted him they overlooked him they never quoted him in in any hadith because he also was known for some of his sheer fabrications when he was working for muawiya bin abi sufyan in syria listen to one of his his fabrications that has been mentioned in the book of imam ahmad ibn hanbal in his musnad this man al arbad ibn sariya as salami he says the prophet invited us for food during the month of ramadan suhoor not iftar suhoor and then i heard the prophet saying allahumma allim muawiyah al kitab wal hisab wa qih al adhab i heard the prophet saying oh god oh god teach muawiyah the knowledge the wisdom of the book which is the holy quran allimhu al kitab wal hisab and also teach him and make him fear the day of judgment waqih al adhab and avert him from keep him away keep him away protect him against the torment and the punishment on the day of judgment this is one of the fabrications of this man al arbad ibn sariya al salami who wrote this hadith and who narrated the hadith of follow the four rightly guided caliphs after me now of course we have sunni historians who rejected this hadith based on this man because this man is the main guy in the chain of narrators and the hadith ends with him and it is on his authority where he has no authority and law no legitimacy and no credibility he said this hadith during that time a time that was hostile against ahlul bayt and a time where the business of the fabrication of the hadith flourished and reached the peak muawiya was so generous giving money to fabricators to liars to wicked people he would collect them from here and there to support his system his political system against the legitimate khalifa amir al-mu'minin alayhi as-salam in kufa we will continue our investigation for a second part on this hadith inshallah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh